morning, everybody. We're in a series called Yet Once More at the moment, and um, this is taken from a book in the Bible called the book of Haggai, or Haggai, and it's all about a chapter in the nation of Israel's life uh, where Haggai was, who was the prophet, one of the leaders, who were calling the people back to God, calling them back to a place of worship from a place of distraction and ultimately destruction. He was calling them back and saying, are we busy building our lives or are we building his house? And so if you're a visitor in here today, just want to say, just enjoy it. Be encouraged, be stimulated, um, enjoy the atmosphere here. And if you're part of our church community, then here we go, round three, ding, ding, ding. Uh, we're going to come together and we're going to look at yet another piece in the puzzle as we ask ourselves, what does yet once more mean for way? What does yet once more mean for us? In the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verse 6 to 7, I'll read it to you. This is what Haggai says to the people of Israel. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more in a little while I will shake the heavens. That's what God says to the people of God. Yet once more in a little while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I'll shake all the nations so all the treasure of all the nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. And later on he says, and I'll fill it with peace, glory and peace. And this is the promise that you and I have for our church community today. That God is going to shake the heavens over our church community. Amen. Amen. Come on. He is going to shake the heavens and he's going to fill this place with glory and with peace. And I said to you. That glory and peace first comes to the church, then through the church. Where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is. So first it happens in this context. First it happens here where we see glory and peace of six amazing people who were transformed by the love and the power of Jesus. That happens in this context because this is where the spirit of God is. So God is going to shake the heavens like salt and pepper over a bunch of chicken. And you're the chicken. And he's going to sprinkle and he's going to season us. And then we're going to go out there and we're going to, it's going to rub off on other people. We're going to bring God's seasoning wherever we are in our homes and our workplaces. But it first starts here. And Haggai says there's three ways that we can worship God. He says that we can give him our time, our talents, and our treasure. Last week I said to you, you need to reset your clock to God's time. It's not on your time. Haggai says that some people say that it is not time yet to build the house of the Lord. And I'm telling you that it is time to build the house of the Lord. And whatever clock you're on, whatever time zone you're in, you need to fly in the right place. You need to get in the right destination, in the right direction. Because God is about to shake the heavens in our church community. And so reset your clock to God's time. Today we're talking about talent. You are the talent. Turn to someone and say... I'm the talent. Come on, even if you're a visitor, you can do that. It's fine. I'm a talent. Say, hi, it's me. I'm the talent. God shipped me in to make all you look better. I'm the talent. Today we're looking at talent. Next week we'll be looking at, at treasure. Haggai asked the ultimate question. Are you busy or are you building? And that's my question to you. If you're part of our church community, are you busy with your own life, doing your own thing, living the way you want to live, doing the thing that you want to do, obsessed with the next paycheck, obsessed with the next car, obsessed with the next holiday to Turkey or Tenerife, or are you building his house? Let's move forward, shall we, a little bit. Let's, let's look at Haggai chapter 1, verse 9. And this is where Haggai is sort of explaining to the people of God some, some of the issues. So uh, listen to this. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Friend, consider your way today. Is your way in your life leading you closer to God? Because if it isn't, if there's anything in your life that is not pushing you towards God pushing you towards truth, pushing you towards grace, then it's not worth following. It's not worth investing in. Consider your ways. Go up to the hills. Bring wood and build the house 
that I may take pleasure in it and that I might, be, I might be glorified, says the Lord. Go up to the hills and bring the wood and come and build the house. And he says that, that I might be pleased and glorified. And this is the connection, right? That if we want glory and peace, we need to live a life that pleases him in order to bring that peace. We need to live a life that glorifies him in order to receive that glory. Verse 9, you looked for much and behold, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why? Declares Lord of hosts. Because my house lies in ruins while each of you busies himself with his own house. Haggai is sassy, isn't he? He's a sassy little prophet. He's what's known as a minor prophet. So he must have been a short king, but he's a sassy short king. Do you know what I mean? a sassy prophet but he was right because he was saying to the people look you go off and do so this is a piece of wood actually from the the bible um from 500 years before jesus was born and you can get them at savoy timber or any other good diy shops um so haggai is saying you go up to the hill and you cut down the trees and you get the wood bring that that you have gained and bring it down and build my house with it. Because, friend, and again, if you're a visitor, and I'm not talking to you, but if you're a follower of Jesus, when you go up to the hill and you collect your wood and you earn that paycheck and you earn that money or you steal it because you're from Wigan, whichever's fine with me, when you go up to the hill and you collect that thing, what do you do with it? What do you do with that finance that God has blessed you with? What do you do with the expertise that you have worked hard to gain with your life? You know how to chop the tree down. You know which trees you're allowed to cut down. You know the, the precise measurements. You know, you, so, so you've worked hard to be able to get the stuff in your life. And you go up the hill and you work hard and you come down. And then you stand and you see the church, which needs so much help right now. And you see your own life, where, where, where does that go? Where does that resource go? Does it go into building his house? Or does it go to the fifth loft conversion? Or the eighth Tesla Cybertruck? I, I know no one owns seven Cybertruck. I'm going to the nth degree here, right? I understand that. Does it go to God? And that's the question for each of us. Because each of us have been blessed with knowledge, insight, expertise, time, strength, money, but ultimately talent that God wants us to worship him with that talent. Bring, bring it into the house, he says. Bring it into the house. Because Haggai is annoyed. Because he sees these amazing people who are going doing amazing thing with their life. And there's so many great things and there's so much excitement and there's so much life in the community. And that he gathers around his people and he sees what could be here. He sees the potential of what could be when every single person goes up to the hill, does the thing and brings the talent, the time and the treasure into the house. Because he knows that we can do far more together than we could ever do alone. And this temple that they rebuild as a people, this, this building, this community, when they put the sacraments back on the table, when they start being the kind of church that, that God deserves, suddenly something starts to happen. Rejuvenation starts to happen in the local area. And the temple that they rebuild, the church that they build, lasts hundreds and hundreds of years. Our church is nearly 100 years old. And uh, every season, there's always been a period where some guy gets up and says, it's time for yet once more season as a church. Well, God doesn't want to stop the blessing, stop the abundance. He doesn't want to stop the great things that are going on in your life. But he doesn't want you to do that at the expense of not bringing it into the house so we can build his temple. So be a bringer. Do you ever invite, do you ever like have a house party and you say, hey, hey, you know, would you bring, would you bring dessert? 
and then they bring dessert and it's like one tiny ramekin of, of like a salted caramel with a bite in the corner. Do you know what I mean? Or, or, or maybe, or, or you know, you might be kind of one of those families where you know who to ask for what dessert or what dish. Do you know what I mean? Like every, every family thing I go to, my mom never asked me to bring any food, mainly because I'm a threat to public health when I cook. Um, but we are all part of a family. And this is the church family. And you might think this is the weirdest family in the world. Yeah, it is the weirdest family in the world. But each of us are meant to bring something to the table. Each of us are meant to bring something in. And you have something to bring. Now, true, you might not have a lot of time. Like you might be shift work on Sundays and it might be erratic. So you can't come and help the welcome team or be part of the baptism team or away kids. But you have an expertise and knowledge in a certain sector. Maybe you're like a counter cyber terrorist human, whatever job that is. Bring that into the house. I've, I don't know of any terrorists that are attacking us one day, but who knows, you know? If you're in here and you're like, man, I've, I've uh, worked in childcare all my life and I've got so many expertise, poof, come bring that into the house. We need it. Maybe you're someone who just loves Jesus and you've been a Christian for a long, long time and you know scripture and you know every verse in the Bible and you can say it in Aramaic and you can say it in Greek and you can even say it in Wiganese. Well, come and bring that gift into the house so we can build with it. Or maybe you're just a guy like me who has no extraordinary talent, but I'm just willing. I just want to be the first in and the last house, the last out, because I know what this house has done for me be a bringer bring it into the house because it's our responsibility um hannah my wife um her dad when i joined the family um there was like an unwritten rule that when i dated his daughter i had to be his automatic free laborer And you know what? That's a genius move, you know. Because when my daughter gets, um, a boy, and when my son gets a girlfriend, you know what I mean? I treat him the same. You're like, carry that pile of bricks, put it there, and then, uh, and then I'll watch him, and I'll go, right, put it back again now. But that's how it should be, because when you join a family, you just join the family business, whatever business that is, whether that is the building, whether that is a church, whether that is uh, whatever it is as a family, we're all meant to carry something and this is my wedding no this is actually hannah's wedding dress guys how beautiful is that have you ever seen the program say yes to the dress yeah i haven't never watch it don't care for it sorry there's a pro <laughs> there's a program called yes to the dress and it's um it's basically where brides go to a bridal shop and um and the people at the bridal shop like i swear down their only job is to make them buy the most expensive gown i say it's 20 percent off do you know what i mean it's just a way of generating money but what they do is the cart the cart the, the, the bride out wearing different sort of dresses and like the people that have come with them you know they either say oh that's ugly don't wear that or, oh well i always like i always like the pleated Let's do it, pl I don't even know that was. Let's do the frills, less frills, more frills here, less frills there. Oh, I like the train. Is this called a train? It's the only train in Britain that runs on time, actually. But this is called a train. And it's a program where you're kind of deciding what dress to wear. That honestly would not work with the groom. And when I got married, I, I honestly, I bought my wedding shoes the day before my wedding, okay? And do you know where I bought them from? George in Asda. That's the level, guys. Does it fill my body? Yeah. Does it have pockets? Great. That's it. Is it on discount? Awesome. But in this season, it's kind of like we're all saying yes to the dress again. We're all saying yes to the bride of Christ, which is the church. In fact, I'll show you a picture of me on the wedding day. I spent so much time grooming and just looking after myself. No, that's Shrek. And that's Fiona. 
Um, I sort of have the spirit of Shrek, but, you know, not quite. Those. No, this is, this is actually the wedding day. That's me and Han. I did well, guys. Glory in the house. Come on now. Somebody give God praise for this ugly little man. Thank you for your mercy. You have shone down on me, your son. Thank you, Lord, for this blonde bombshell here. Just to make it clear, Dave Cadman was marrying us. I wasn't marrying him. He was marrying us in the middle. Kind of looking at Hannah saying, are you sure you want to do this? Guys, how beautiful is my wife? Amazing. And this is the actual dress, and we'll be selling this afterwards for anybody that wants to... uh, (laughs) You know when you get married... You're not just saying yes to the dress. You're, you're saying yes every day to bringing something to that relationship that's going to make it work and thrive. In the years of marriage that I've had with Han, and it's been a great ride. I, I mean, it sounds like I'm getting a divorce. I'm not, we're all good guys. You know, every season requires something different. Every season requires even more patience, more happiness. You know, it requires more joy, it requires more perseverance. Sometimes it requires more laughter. It requires lots of different things, but it always requires one thing. And it's to always bring something in order to build my house. Whatever that thing is, is whatever it is in the season, but I've always got to be the bringer in the relationship. And even in the times where it's difficult, you've still got to make the choice to be the bringer, to be the person who is going to bring something. And do you know what the best thing about marriage is? Is they have the same mentality. But you know what? In this season, I'm going to bring this to make this work. So what are you bringing to the bride? What are you bringing to his church? We have not been great at mobilizing people in the church. We, and I take responsibility for this, we have, you know, we have grown numerically 38% in two and a half years. That's amazing. We've prayed for over 200 people, 50 salvation, six more baptisms to add to the dozens that have happened over the last few years. On one Sunday last year, we baptized like nearly 20 people. I mean, guys, this is a work of God in our town. But that work cannot rest on the shoulders of a few where we go out earn our money do our do get all our expertise and we just come to the house and we take we turn up we enjoy it we laugh we cry and then we go home and act as if this never existed that is not a relationship that can work that's not a relationship between the bride and christ that's not the relationship haggai is saying haggai is saying Yet, once more, it's time to build his house. And it's time to bring that talent into the house. So we've not been great at creating opportunities. I don't know what you're good at. I've not a clue. But I want to know. And I want you to come and serve. Well, I've only been here for three minutes. Well, come on in, brother. I've been here for 600 years, 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 years. Great, come be a statue outside and just smile. Great. And I'm admitting to you that me and the leadership team, we don't have it all together. We don't have all the answers. You try and lead a a flipping church this diverse when you've never done it before. But one thing I know, I'm going to be a bringer. I'm going to go up and anything I make, anything I do, I'm going to bring it into the house of the Lord. So we've got a table outside where someone other than me... (laughs) who actually knows what they're doing, it's going to be there. And we have a list of all the different opportunities at WEC, all the different teams. I think there's even numbers there about how many people we need in each team. And, and I think it will be great, um, Alex and the guys, if we maybe keep that out there for a few weeks, because uh, some people aren't here and it might take time to digest. But you can go there and there's going to be some people at the desk. And you can say, look, I'm a mechanic, you know, or, or I'm a... I'm, I'm a painter or, or I, I'm, a, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I'm free in the week to just come and help with some admin or whatever or in the grocery, then go to that table and just talk about who you are. 
talk about the talent, to bring that piece of, I've got this piece of wood, what, what, how can I use it, how can I build it, because we need you in this season. And they, they'll tell you where the opportunities are. Even if you don't have the time, but you have the talent, we'll find a space in order to make it work so that we are all being bringers in the house. There's some great people in the church. I want to say thank you to Ayo and Kemi, who are just two wonderful people, two wonderful girls who have a heart for worship and a heart to serve. Thank you for bringing them into the house. I want to thank you for Beverly, to Beverly, who when she first came, noticed that she had a, she had a heart for young women uh, and so created a special group. I want to say thank you for sowing that into our church community. I want to thank you to Derek, who you'll never see Derek, but you'll hear his name randomly shouted around. Though his mother has had extraordinary sickness and serving, Derek still volunteers week in, week out, building the house. I want to thank Paul and Julie for, for doing like the back row pastors. Thank you for serving and loving people, especially those who others might find uncomfortable to embrace and love. Thank you to Lily, Vicky, and Sarah May, who do a fantastic job with our way youth and the, the youth alpha that is going on there. Thank you to Walter, who is such an intercessor for the church, who prays for us so intently and then takes that gift into the medical world and ministering to people. Thank you to Martin, who sits outside of postcode every single morning and prays for the church, prays for the leaders. You might think he's asleep or he might have died, but he's not. He's just praying. He's just very still. Thank you to Graham and Kath, who've gone again, who are in the trenches with us and building once more, even after 50, I don't know how old he is, 50, 60, 70, 80 years of life. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Kath, for building with us. Thank you to Big Mike and Hazel and all the people at CARD, the Christians Addiction Recovery Group. We're starting to see the fruit of seeds that you planted off a tree that is growing and is being fruitful. And thank you to the 200 volunteers we have in this church. Thank you. The good news is, is there's about 200 more adults that have the talent, the time, and the treasure to bring into the house. So this can become truly something special for the ages. So are you busy or are you building? And what are you bringing in order to build this house? 